Hi, I'm Nawal Motika, and welcome to Mamas and Papas. This show seeks to ignite a dialogue on parenting and family lifestyle. On today's show, we'll be discussing fertility status, look into ideas of paternity leave. Lastly, we go to some double trouble as we talk about multiple births. Because becoming a mother is natural does not mean that motherhood comes naturally to all women. Becoming a mother did not come naturally to me. I've never understood how and why women are expected to become nurturing maternal figure overnight. Not only is this unnatural and untrue, it puts a lot of pressure on new moms to be. One of the biggest issues that new mothers face is natural feeding. For many women, natural feeding is painful and traumatic. What is meant to be a bonding experience between mom and baby can become stressful. Today we ask experts about natural feeding. So it's lovely, lovely getting together with you again and chatting. It's been so long. It has, I know. My goodness, and we've had so many children between us yeah. in the interim. So <laughs> three versus two. I still think I have it easier though, and two, that's where I stopped. I'm sorry. You know what, Polly? It's like three, yes, it's difficult, but yeah. it's actually, in a way, easier. How is that two. possible? Because the third one is so chilled. <laughs> because she has absolutely no, we have no time for her. Yeah, but <laughs> dealing with her two brothers on a yeah. constant basis. Like she just like chills there and is happy and quite, you know, comfortable to do her own thing while we yeah. tend to her brothers. We must admit this, yeah, the second pregnancy and birth and being a mom second time around is definitely a lot easier but I was yeah it, it was quite scary for me and I, you know like a lot of the times I thought you know I was brave and I can do it and I don't need help but with the second time around I kind of admitted to myself I'm not a hero it is okay to ask for help if I am scared or I don't know what it, to do I can go to my mom or fellow moms like you and, yeah. and just like ask for help because it really isn't as easy as it looks I don't know when it comes to this whole bonding issue and breastfeeding, I mean, for me, I don't think my bond is any less for not having breastfed my, well, my two babies yeah. more than I did Kieran. There, there are nice moments to it, though. When you look down and you see them suckling, and there is there is an element of bonding. Like, yes, I'm like busy biting you. <laughs> you little baby, you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> But um, whether, whether you're bottle feeding them or breastfeeding them, there's definitely that, that nurturing that goes into feeding a child, you know, and I think that's the most important thing. And a lot of my friends who have become moms said they've never felt more mother-like yeah. or more of a mother than when they are breastfeeding their babies. Yeah. I disagree. I do. <laughs> yeah. and so whether it's a bottle it. or a boob, as long as the baby's happy, That's you're fabulous. happy. But every moment of my life, I feel like a mother. Yeah. How can you not? Just exactly. you can't isolate one thing like breastfeeding, which the whole society as a whole, there's just so much emphasis on breastfeeding, yeah. and that you are not a mother until you have breastfeed. I disagree. Mm. I'm a mother just by giving birth. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. qualifies I think, me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Women with flat or inverted nipples can definitely breastfeed. It's breastfeeding and not nipple feeding. Flat or inverted nipples can be treated in pregnancy already, but focus should rather be on the positioning and latch on of the babies rather than the shape of the nipple. Women with flat or inverted nipples usually get a problem breastfeeding, but usually there is um, there are machines that are usually used for retraction of the nipples, but ideally it's, it's difficult for them to breastfeed. When feeding twins or triplets, it's always as with even a single baby, best to start as, of, as early as possible and to nurse frequently. Expressing of mom's milk can be done to provide adequate nourishment for the babies, but also to build mom's milk supply. Alcohol is not advised during nursing. 
but for patients who really have to take their medications, say epileptic patients, hypertensive patients, diabetic patients, they can take medication while nursing. Bonding through breastfeeding is definitely more natural and easier as mom and baby has more skin-to-skin -skin contact and will just naturally spend more time together. That way mom will learn to, uh, her baby's skills so much easier and bonding will be so much faster. It is not true that the mother can only bond with the baby by natural feeding. Mothers who are bottle feeding or doing the artificial feeding also can bond with the babies. Colostrum is needed in very little qu quantity and it contains all the antibodies but also very important is the fact that it lines the gut of the tummy and that protects the gut so that there, no, there will be no lesions in the baby's tummy where bacteria etc can pass through. And that is one of the reasons why breastfeeding is an advantage to the baby as it protects the baby against um, all kinds of sickness. Different studies has been done, have been done, and they have found that a baby receiving donated human milk will outweigh a baby receiving artificial milk, for example, in all aspects. So it's definitely an option worthwhile looking into. And also into take, if you take into consideration that the World Health Organization recommends mum breastfeeding her baby from her breast as a first option. Second option is to express mom's milk and feed that to the baby. Third option is to use donated human milk. And fourth up option may only be artificial milk. The World Health Organization recommends exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life and continued breastfeeding for two years and beyond. Weaning should always be done with love and patience and gradually. To be a winner on Mamas and Papas, all you need to do, follow the instructions at the bottom of your screen. Having actually our beautiful and wonderful um, guests on studio, welcome, ladies. Thanks, uh, Rahadi, you haven't been struggling for all over 12 years to, to fall pregnant. Mm -hmm. How did you overcome, I mean, overcome the whole journey? Uh, now, while I must say that we're living on interesting time um, as, as women and husbands, and our lifestyle have changed terribly so. And the fact that, uh, as you said earlier, um, uh, the mother-in-laws, uh, the relatives start pointing fingers at the female. Mm. I guess uh, today modern men have changed uh, and they look at ways and means of making sure that they don't disrupt their family lifestyle because of an issue which has not been tested before. In my case, I had my first daughter um, uh, at my early 30s um, and at eight months, two weeks, uh, the unfortunate happened and uh, I was told that there was no heartbeat mm. um, and that was the end of my happiness at that time. Uh, interesting, so within, uh, after that I thought it was going to be easy for me to fall pregnant after the first one um, uh, who came naturally. And I must say that it has been a battle for the 12 years. I could not fall pregnant at all. I, I went from various specialists, you know, trying to find what the cost and they couldn't. Uh, everyone came with his or her own uh, diagnosis of what could be the problem. And I waited and I waited. And knowing we as women, yes. if we are destined to get something, we strive to focus on that and making sure that we achieve the objectives. My husband and I have been a team in making sure that That's we wonderful. avoid uh, external influences to change our mindset and focusing on what we want. Uh, and the, the, the happiness was uh, in a year ago um, when I was confirmed that I was pregnant, which was like 
news to us because <laughs> it came at a time when we were not expecting. And that was after 12 years? It was after 12 years, my friend, and I was 40 years of age at that time. And you know, at 40, you start counting mm -hmm. now losing hope. and losing hope to say that it's not going to happen. And I must say that when we were confirmed that we are pregnant with a son, it was the most wonderful news that we've ever had ever since. And my son now is going for nine months. And to us, as we are testimony to couples that are struggling to, have, to be pregnant, to say that if you have hope, stop counting days. Great story. I mean, yeah. uh, you actually had your own experience in your whole journey as well. And you started, you know, um, you know that, that the program or that foundation just to say there are actually platforms for people to, who are struggling to, you know, um, mm. go for mm. uh, IVFs. Can you tell us more about that one? Well, we, we my partner, Tammy Sisman, and I founded Gift of Life. And essentially, we're an egg donation and a surrogacy fertility agency. So we provide for, for couples that either need surrogates or need egg donors that mm -hmm. service. Um, and that came through our own struggles um, with infertility where, you know, uh, I have two children. Well, well, this one to be born next week. Wow. <laughs> and my son of 22 months and both conceived via IVF. Yes. So, um, and my partner, Tammy, still trying to, you know, trying to have a baby of her own mm -hmm. through IVF. And I think one, look, I mean, you're, you're quite a miracle in terms of falling naturally, uh, pregnant naturally at 40. You know, I mean, the reality is in terms of fertility rates is that women's fertility peaks between the ages of 18 and 25. Mm -hmm. Now, our lifestyles have changed so much that uh, there are very few couples and women that are having children that early. Mm -hmm. Between the ages of 25 and 35, your fertility rate starts to decline gradually. Mm -hmm. From 35 to 40, there's a rapid decline in your fertility rate, and over 40, you know, it's it's not that easy to conceive. Mm -hmm. So, um, 